right, now we have Alexander Chimeris uh, talking about his hardware system um, that I believe was, it was originally developed around the idea of OpenBTS and has since kind of grown from there. Let's Hi. So uh, my name is Alexander Chemris, as it was mentioned, and uh, this is our approach for the GSM hardware, which again, as was mentioned, was turned out to be like more than a GSM hardware, and it's uh, actually quite flexible. So um, I will briefly tell what what is UMTRX and why we designed it, and then like go deep into the details. And uh, feel free to ask questions as you uh, like, as you have them, especially at the technical details area. And uh, I mean, just feel free to ask. So uh, UMTRX was designed uh, as a transceiver for a very low cost GSM base station. Uh, how many of you have ever heard about the OpenBTS project? Raise your hand. Okay, so most of people, good. Um, so as you know that uh, the promise of OpenBTS is to have a very low cost mobile communication system. And uh, their project founders and like uh, other people who are contributing like doing a great job doing this. But uh, up until now, their like main showstopper for this was that there were no uh, hardware transceiver for GSM, which is available on the market. Because uh, if you, uh, you you could buy um, PC part, you could buy the RF part, like amplifiers, antennas, and everything. But uh, you can't buy a transceiver which would uh, be at the same time cheap and pass the GSM specs. I mean, their big guys have those transceivers, but they don't sell it to the like, general public. Um, so um, we decided that we should do that, and that's their final result. Not really final, but I mean, some, some result. Uh, and we don't uh, target to femtocells because it's a completely different uh, market and completely different technical uh, parameters. So we, we are really targeting to uh, base stations which are like put on a tower with like big antennas, you know, like. So, uh, but as I mentioned, it's uh, just a GSM, uh, just a, an SDR transceiver. So. Uh, it has like very um, flexible configuration. Uh, it could support a very bi very wide tuning range. Um, it has very wide bandwidth. You know, like it could uh, switch between TDD mode and FDD mode. Um, it has uh, one gigabit per second Ethernet connection to the uh, to the host, uh, where it just streams. Um, IQ data, uh, it has GPS stabilized clock because this is a, a requirement for, for GSM system. And I mean, GSM systems are, uh, GSM base stations are like, known for very strict requirements for, for, for their uh, clock stability. And if you ever try to run open BTS, then you probably know all those issues with phones which are not camping to your base station or like falling out of conversation and so on and so on. So like GPS stabilization is a requirement. Or you have to buy an expensive uh, uh, oven uh, stabilizer, a CXO. So this is pretty expensive. And the interesting thing uh, during the development that we found that it's cheaper to stabilize a T6CO right now than to buy an expensive O6O. I mean, uh, this is quite strange development of like modern days. Um, yeah, and it's designed to be like industrial grade, so you really could put it on a tower, like, and it could work for for a couple of years. We haven't done any uh, real industrial tests yet. I mean, it's still in development. Uh, but at least we are doing our best to design for, for industrial. Um, okay, so 
and uh, we designed this as an open source hardware. Uh, so like we uh, plan to publish all the information about the design, including all design files. So uh, like if you want to have your modification and manufacture your version, I mean you're welcome to do so. And uh, we just uh, expect that like your courtesy if you um, get us know about what you are doing and uh, like share share your changes in a like normal community way. But again, if if you want to change anything, just please do so. Uh, and again, it was uh, it's very very versatile. It's very like wide bandwidth. Uh, their front end we use is designed to cope with OFDM and CDMA systems. So I believe that uh, all of these systems could be easily um, easily uh, the, the UMTRX could be easily used with all of these systems. I mean, we have never tried yet, but again, you are you are welcome to test this. Uh, so uh, this is our. Uh, stage right now, the the bottom uh, the board on the top is the first prototype, and the board on the bottom is the uh, second prototype, which is the current prototype and uh, the uh, pre-production version. So like this is um, the complete uh, GSM transceiver with amplifiers, duplexers, and everything uh, in it. Uh, with their, our first um, a first prototype, and it, I mean, it works. Um, we could run OpenBTS on that, and uh, I mean, it just works. And this is the second prototype board. I received it just a couple of days ago from the fab, so it's not really running yet. It's just very, very fresh from the fab. I mean, you could almost smell how fresh is it. Uh, you know, <laughs> um, and I, I will just pass it. If, if you want to see and smell yourself. <laughs> yeah. So this is a lo long list of changes we did. I mean, it's not very interesting, I guess. I mean, just want to show that we are like really trying to make some effort to make it more um, more industrial and, uh, and and better. Like for example, we replaced their capacitors. Um, oh, how is this name in English? Um, sorry. Um, electrolytic capacitors ca capacitors uh, with their tantalum capacitors for longer life. It's just one of uh, modifications which we made. We also optimized it for automatic mounting. Like you could see that all those connectors are SMD mounted, um, and so on and so on. So it's quite a few changes. And uh, this white uh, places here is not because I try to hide anything. It's just the fab uh, placed um, um, their uh, heat con 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 conducting um, heat conducting material on top of the chips while we ask them to do that on the bottom. You know, <laughs> on the wrong side. Um, and so these are just pieces of uh, heat conducting material. I removed them uh, from this board, so you could actually uh, see. Oops. Uh, copy of the slide. OK, uh, so now into the technical details. And um, the architecture of the board is actually uh, derived from the well-known usurps. I mean, it's like a cold and standard right now, so. You know. Um, as you could uh, see, we, uh, the, uh, the heart of the board is uh, Spartan 6, uh, which is uh, doing all the digital heavy lifting, like uh, DSP stuff, which is actually all the same stuff which is done in uh, FPGA in USERP. So if you ever had any experience with USERP, so you know what is done in the FPGA here. It's like um, filtering, down conversion, up conversion, uh, and pack packaging of data into into the Ethernet packets, and these two chips are um, our transceivers. They are single chip transceivers, uh, which take IQ data um, on the input, 
uh, and uh, actually produce radio frequency on the output. I will uh, show the, the chip inside later. And the SRAM, again, is an user for uh, transmit buffering, uh, flash for FPGA um, firmware, a gigabit Ethernet for control and for IQ data streaming. And this, uh, our T6CO plus GPS. And uh, it's quite often people ask, how do we do the GPS stabilizing? Uh, we are doing in the cheapest possible way, which is enough for, for GSM, which is uh, we route one PPS signal from GPS to FPGA, run a normal PID control loop in FPGA and just uh, use a um, very small D DAC uh, to uh, pull the T6O frequency a little bit. So like this is not like, if you are targeting like the real GPS DO, I mean, it's not that thing, but it's cheap and it's fine for, for, for GSM. It can't provide like uh, phase, um, um, phase consistency, but again, what our target was to stabilize frequency below their uh, 50 ppb parts per billion. So, and this is working fine for this. It's, I, I, I think it's even below like one PPB or some, or, or maybe 10 PPB, something like that. So this is a um, closer look on the board. Um, so this big thing is FPGA. This is SRAM. This is um, um, gigabit file and the connector uh, this is a power. Um, this is debug uh, debug connector. So this is just a mini USB, and if you plug this into your computer, um, it will rec the Linux computer would recognize it uh, as a, a serial um, USB to serial converter, and you just connect with any like. Um, any terminal like PuTTY or just CAT from this device, and you will see the debug output, which is going from FPGA. Uh, again, it's similar to, 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 the, to the users because we, we are using the, the same uh, software inside. Uh, so the interesting part is, is here. Um, these are two channels, our two radio channels. So uh, it is completely a two channel full duplex. I mean, each channel is full. Um, two full duplex channels. Um, this is uh, LMS uh, 6002 uh, chip, this one as well. Um, this is just the power for the chip and for everything else. Uh, we have a small uh, power amplifier here which amplifies output from the chip up to uh, 100 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts depending on the band. Um, here is uh, one input and here is another input. This input is uh, like normal input which we usually connect to antenna. And this input is a scanning input. So uh, you could connect that to uh, some other smaller antenna if you want to make uh, like um, surround frequency scanning before you turn on your device. So this is useful when you deploy a base station in an unknown environment, you really want to see what's, what's around, what's going on. Because uh, in, in GSM, probably like not everyone of you know, the GSM is a FDD system, so you have, um, uh, you have a duplexer, and uh, having a duplexer means that your uh, normal receive, uh, your n normal uh, uplink uh, channel your normal, normal uplink input or receive part here uh, can't hear another base station. I mean, it's, it's great for your RF performance, but that doesn't allow you to make scanning of surrounding base stations. So that's why we have this uh, second input. Um, so this is a clock distributor. The clock actually is here. It's either, either a T6CO or we have an option on a PCB4 or 6CO if you really want to get like the best performance uh, or if you don't have a sky on top of you. I mean, if you want to run that uh, on a base, 
basement uh, where you don't have GPS signal, you probably want to have an O6CO to, to, um, to follow the standard. So this is a cloud distributor which is also goes to, then goes to all the other directions. And this is a GPS chip and here is a GPS antenna. Uh, all antennas uh, by default are uh, UFL, but we also have options uh, for SMA uh, connections for, um, oh yeah, this is a GPS antenna and this is a clock input-output antenna. So you could uh, uh, output the clock from one uh, transceiver to another transceiver. So one transceiver could be, like, they could be chained uh, with their common clock if you want to have a couple of transceivers um, synchronized. But actually, our, our main idea was not to have like a MIMO, but uh, to save a few more bucks by removing this T6CO, which is like 20 bucks or something like that, and GPS, which is also like 15 bucks. So if we chain them together, we could save like 35 bucks per, per board. Um, these are small SMD LEDs. Uh, these ones are again the same as in USERP. Uh, this one, these ones are um, showing status of your clock. One is clock, uh, one is uh, GPS, and one other, I don't recall exactly what, I'm sorry. Um, so this is connector is for connecting uh, uh, some front end because uh, without the front end, we can't uh, really follow GSM specifications here, and I'll, I'll go into this a little bit later, but again, uh, you could um, design specific front ends for, for this, um, for this uh, UMTRX uh, to uh, kind of get something more specialized to your requirements, like slightly narrow band, like in GSM, or like more filtering, or additional stage of um, of um, uh, of frequency um, frequency conversion. Uh, so this has some digital pins uh, and uh, their power. And these are two fun connectors. One of them is connected to um, thermal um, thermal sensor, which should uh, turn on your fan when it's uh, uh, when the temperature goes above some predefined frequency or predefined uh, temperature. So this is. Um, I think that's it for the um, walk through the board. And if you have any questions on the board, no. Um, so this is uh, the single chip transceiver which we use, and it, I think it deserves some some time to tell about this chip because it's uh, it's pretty unique on the market, and uh, not only because it's uh, maybe the only single chip transceiver of that kind um, on the market, but because uh, it the, the company is inherently open source friendly. Uh, they started as a very like closed company, but um, then they realized that uh, being more open source friendly could help them, and now they're doing their best to, to, to uh, build the community to help the community, and that's what other company on the market should do. Um, so it, it basically started with that we wanted to, to use that chip, but we wanted to be open source, open source hardware. We wanted to publish all our schematics, all our um, design files and all our software. So we contacted this, uh, this company and asked like whether we could do that because many companies, I mean, uh, initially they required NDA. And if you get a chip under NDA, you could end up that you have to obscure parts of your PCB layout when you publish it. That's what happened for um, uh, this open source phone. Open Moco, yeah. So they 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 use it uh, some G, um, a graphic uh, processing uh, G GPU chip, which was under NDA, so they could not publish their full um, 
PCB layout of the boards because uh, their manufacturers of chip uh, didn't allow them to, um, to publish their pinout of, of the chip. I mean, that's ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, but it's, that was how it worked. Uh, and uh, here, uh, the company was uh, said, uh, you could publish the, your, your schematics. And then we started talking with them more and more. And uh, finally, um, I described to them like how open source works, like what is it about, like what do they need to do. And uh, finally, right now, you could get the documentation from the, uh, for the chip uh, on my GitHub. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, you could ask uh, the questions about this documentation uh, through me. And uh, I will forward this to them and get, get, the question, get their answer back. Um, and hopefully more and more documentation. Uh, so I mean, this is pretty powerful chip. It's open source friendly. So I, I like, invite everyone to, to look into this and uh, think whether it may be a good, good choice for, for your design, for your next design. Um, so basically, what, what, what you have here is this is a transmit chain. This is a receive chain. Um, you have DAC uh, power amplifier, uh, preamplifier, filtering, LPF, uh, mixer, and then the power amplifier here. And uh, on the receive side, again, you have um, LNA on the input, mixer, uh, then um, a couple of uh, VGAs, uh, and uh, low-pass filter, and ADC. So this is, you really could connect antenna here, like with very minimal amount of uh, external components. Um, and if you look uh, at, the, at their design, you uh, really see that all the components here uh, and almost all, the com all of the components here are just passives. And uh, so design is pretty, pretty simple. And I hope when we publish our design, it will be even simpler because you could just like take the, the some parts of that. Um, so I mean, you could get better performance with um, discrete components. But then you really have to be like the RF guy, know what you are doing, and have the very specific target. Why do you need this like very high performance thing? And here, uh, it's uh, it, it's just very simple. It's a, um, it's a single chip. So one of our goals was that we want to really simplify manufacturing. I mean, the less parts we have on the board, the simpler our manufacturing is. Um, and why do we have their uh, dual channels on the board? Is because of we believe that a cheapest GSM base station uh, should have uh, re two real uh, RF channels because this allows us uh, to use mm, two antennas for diverse to receive. Like you see this uh, this part. You could with the RF switches. You could receive from any of antennas, either from the first or, the, or for the, from the second, and this allows you to to to, to um, have a diversity switch receive, which, um, as you may know, there um, uh, saves saves you from a white um, um, say um, white spaces uh, of in, in the coverage. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we uh, have uh, each one PA for each antenna, which uh, allows us to use a very efficient and cheap uh, nonlinear saturated power amplifiers. Because GSM uses GMSK, it doesn't require like very, uh, it doesn't require very good linearity, and uh, amplifiers for single-channel GSM systems are much, much cheaper. And what's more important for us, they are much more power efficient than linear, high, highly linear power amplifiers. So this design really allows us to build a system which, is, which has um, pretty good capacity. It's um, 15 uh, voice channels at the same time and still be very power efficient and uh, like 
money efficient, like cost efficient. And yeah, so for, for OpenBTS, it, it, it connects to a PC uh, with a one gigabit interface, and basically that's it. Um, so as I mentioned, you could have um, various front ends uh, for, for this board uh, if you are not satisfied with some parameters, if you want to amplify, um, receive, or transmit, or if you want to have something very, really special. So uh, for GSM, uh, we have an issue with this chip uh, because uh, it's um, low-pass filter bandwidth starts from uh, 1.5 uh, megahertz. And GSM uh, bandwidth is uh, like 300, uh, 300 kilohertz. So this is much, much smaller. And uh, this means that uh, we, if we have a couple of uh, channels which are sitting uh, next to each other, uh, then uh, we have an issue of like far near far problem with their mobile handsets where uh, mobile handsets which are close to the base station uh, on a, on a um, like next uh, uh, channel to us uh, will uh, saturate our, our receiver and doesn't allow us to receive the far mobile which is sitting on our channel. So uh, for, for this, uh, this is like so-called like selectivity. And um, we need uh, good selectivity to uh, get into this, uh, uh, to get this issue solved first to um, like formally uh, follow the GSM standard, which is required if you want to uh, certify our hardware for GSM and we like won't certify it. Uh, and the second, uh, if you want to run this hardware uh, if in, in some dense uh, environment, like in, in a city, in an urban environment, where you have many base stations around. If you run this base station in a basement or like in, in a like far like remote area, like in a village somewhere, whether it's you are the only base station around, you don't really care about this selectivity problem just because there are no base stations around. But uh, if you want to be in a dense um, environment, then you need this. So uh, what we do is uh, we designed um, this uh, front-end board. Uh, it's still in the development, um, so I could only show you like this uh, 3D pictures and not the real board. Um, what it does, it introduces uh, an intermediate frequency. So uh, it has uh, its own um, mixer, which uh, brings your, your uh, RF frequency from 900 megahertz or like 1800 megahertz down to like 400 megahertz, um, where we filter it. Um, I don't see re really filter here, but it's can find it here, but uh, there, there should be a, fil a channel filter for GSM uh, for uh, like around 400 megahertz, uh, which um, then uh, you f we feed to the oops, to the input of uh, UMTRX. So um, in, in this case, uh, we don't need all the uh, like wide range of um, of tuning of Umtrix, uh, but uh, we still uh, have the benefits of uh, the very compact design. So this is how it fits uh, on the Umtrix board. You see the, uh, this uh, connector, uh, which is um, the front-end connector, and uh, these windows are actually to pass cables um, Near, near the casing because we expect that uh, UMTRX will be like, uh, in the case uh, which, you, which, which you may see, uh, it's very tightly um, inserted into a case and uh, we think that the power amplifier will be b below the, 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 the board so we need uh, some um, window to, 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 push, uh, to put the cable uh, below that.
And so um, there, as I mentioned, that uh, the design is very much uh, like was inspired by by Usurps, and uh, we use the same uh, software as Usurps do, uh, but a slightly older version. Uh, so this uh, the UHD software about which Matt was uh, was speaking um, previously, and uh, so uh, thanks to that. Uh, it worked with OpenBTS like almost without uh, modifications. Um, it's uh, pretty soon, uh, hopefully, will work with OpenBSC thanks to uh, some uh, work going on with their OpenBTS and OpenBSC integration. And again, thanks to UHD firmware, um, it kind of works with GNU Radio. It doesn't like, fully work with GNU Radio right now because we don't populate all the um, uh, so all their uh, parameters which UHD, uh, which GNU Radio expect from UHD, like frequency range, like uh, uh, gains range, uh, bandwidth range. I mean, it's uh, just some kind of software development which we haven't done yet, and uh, ho hopefully we'll do that in the next, like, in the in the coming month. So probably early next year we'll see the full support for Fogno Radio, and it could be used as just as a generic uh, SDR transceiver. So yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the UHD integration uh, is still uh, not very complete. It works with OpenBTS, but I mean, if you want to get the, like your like true UHD feeling, it's not yet there. You know, um, we still need to design cheap GSM power amplifier. Uh, we have tried hard to find a Chinese manufacturer which could make a like good, yet cheap, yet working for us, GSM power amplifier. I mean, and we failed right now um, because we found one manufacturer, but it, they didn't have exactly what we want. We had to modify it and so propose changes to them. Then they said we, we, should, we, we will do hand soldering for quantities which uh, you require for us. We said that hand soldering is not an option for us. You know, like, it doesn't work. So it, it looks like we'll have to design the power amplifier. And I mean, uh, we are very small company. We are a very small community. Uh, we have like, uh, six engineers working on that on all levels like from the hardware to the up to the high le very high level GSM software uh, so in uh, I mean in uh, the design of the Umterix itself I think uh, only like two and a half people are taking part so uh, I I if you know people who would have fun designing a power amplifier for real GSM base station, please let me know because we really need some more people to do this work. We are just fully booked with, with the other work on, on GSM. And probably some more hardware tweaking to get the better parameters. We are, we are still figuring out how to like get everything working like really uh, perfect. So, um, and if you want to get part in the development, I mean, we could uh, get the early prototypes to you at a like deeply discounted um, price, probably not, not uh, completely freely, uh, but at really, really low, uh, low price, so you could uh, help us. Um, just let me know if you're interested in that. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? At, at 15 simultaneous users utilizing your hardware, what's the bandwidth that I have to stick, uh, that I need to utilize to be able to get clean conversations in and out of your device? Um, so 15 channels is two GSM channels. Uh, so each GSM channel is uh, 300 kilohertz. 
but it's better uh, to move them slightly upward from each other. So, uh, you mean, they don't fit into this uh, 1.5 uh, megahertz of LPF, so like you really would need uh, a kind of two megahertz of of, of uh, RF frequency available, but you could do I mean with like um, less than a one megahertz if you use a selectivity improvement board. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. Nobody asked about the price. I think so. What's the price? <laughs> How, have you tested it? Yeah. I mean. uh, <laughs> yeah, because uh, I have a doubt in the core network. What have you used it in your test? Asterisk, for example? Yes, so we, we use OpenBTS. So, and uh, I mean, with OpenBTS, we just used Asterisk. For and you have a maximum number of users in your network? Uh, I mean, you have used the in, with in the whole network? Yeah. I mean, we haven't tested for, for that case, but I don't see it, it, it as a limitation because Asterisk or Free Switch could handle like thousands of users, if not millions of users. We have guys who is working with, vo with, with voice over IP systems, and I mean, those systems could handle many thousands of users. All right, well, let's thank uh, Alexander and thank uh, again for all of the speakers today. I thought it was fantastic talks, and you saw all sorts of various presentation styles and various ideas. And, um, and again, this last session, I think, showed us that there are a lot of different areas for, for SDR hardware. And, and again, this, this kind of market space is, is, is expanding in, in different niches that are being found for it. So we're seeing some really interesting stuff coming out. So, so once again, let's uh, thank the speakers.